All right, hello, welcome back everybody. PayPal and Patreon are down below if you want to support me, and we do so if you actually can. So, some of you may remember my solar power video recently, specifically about solar photovoltaics or solar PV, and that one was about how the math does not really work out for using solar as a reliant mass power generation system. You don't really want to be relying on something that looks like this for your power grid. You know, ideally you want to be relying on something that can look like this, that can hold itself completely steady. Solar power does not really fit that glove. However, wind power can, not necessarily does automatically, it can if you deploy wind power, if you implement wind turbines where it actually works. As across most regions, most places on the globe, wind is very intermittent. It has patterns and unpredictabilities. So your wind power generation graph for any given week can look something sporadic like this, with that of the U.S. fluctuating anywhere from 70 gigawatts of wind power generation to as low as only 15. That kind of wild erratic fluctuation is, as we already said, not ideal. However, there are special locations, some larger or smaller than others around the world. These locations do actually off the ground, at the height of wind turbines at least, but these specific locations do actually have the critical item for wind power, and that is eternal wind. And by eternal wind, I mean actual eternal wind, as in the wind is perpetually blowing, not human anecdotal, it's windy a lot, but actual eternal wind. One of the most famous regions for this is obviously the interchange, the connector between the North Sea and Baltic Sea. That is why countries that have access to that area have placed so many wind turbines there, because in that interchange, there is, regardless of which pattern it's following or which direction it's going, eternal wind. And actually, that eternal wind factor does extend out to specific parts of the North Sea and Baltic Sea themselves, actually taking fair portions of the Baltic Sea and the Gulf of Finland, along with onshore portions of Sweden, Finland, the Baltics, and that northwestern portion of Russia. There are other areas across the world that do have eternal wind. One of them, a bit to the south, also in Europe, is the Dardanelles, basically the break in the mountains of Turkey and Greece that allows a flow-through or a link between the Aegean Sea and the Black Sea in that area, and then extending out from that down into the Aegean Sea. And there is, for the most part, eternal wind, and there is, and there is with varying different patterns of it, eternal wind within the Black Sea itself, tending, whether sweeping inland or sweeping out from this southwestern portion of Ukraine. There is also, while shifting directions, a pattern of eternal winds over in the western Mediterranean, coming down, coming down out of, or up into and through that southern region of France there, and then over the outer portions of and around and in between the islands of Corsica and Sardinia. Over in the Americas, in the U.S., you'll get a lot of anecdotal quotes about the Midwest and the Great Plains always being windy. However, that's not the case for the entire region. are actually kind of confined to a few specific bubbles, one of the primary ones of those being the Panhandle of Texas, a more rectangular portion that joins up with Oklahoma up there. So the neck of Texas and some surrounding portions of Oklahoma and New Mexico does have eternal wind up at wind turbine height. Also, the majority of the eastern portion of Wyoming, as it has sort of a wind waterfall downsweep coming out of the mountains there, and over the water of and around the Great Lakes, both in the U.S. and Canada, there are varying patterns that shift around, but essentially are always there in one form or another, along with, in Canada's case, the entirety of at least coastal Nova Scotia and Newfoundland, 
if they were to start deploying wind turbines en masse up and around there, whether offshore or onshore around the coastal portions, the Nova Scotia Peninsula and the island of Newfoundland, while again the direction and patterns shift, those two are constantly being buffeted by actual eternal wind. The Cape Hatteras Islands or the Barrier Islands offshore of North Carolina are also subject to eternal wind, along with obviously the shallow waters surrounding them. Going further down, stretching in to Central America, there's a few through fares or thoroughfares where there's mountain gaps and the air flows from one ocean over into the other, being compressed and channeled rapidly through there onshore. One of those, there's one in Mexico, one in Nicaragua, and one in Panama. You also have the very northern portions of Venezuela and Colombia, those peninsulas that sort of stick out into the southern Caribbean. A few select bubble portions of the Brazilian highlands, mainly in the northeast, are subject to eternal wind, just in very narrow, confined areas. The majority of the wind power potential strength in South America overall is in Uruguay and Argentina, as they are constantly being subjected to this, to this wind inflow tsunami, basically, from the Atlantic, a lot of which, though, ends up curving around down southwards and joins in with air coming up over and falling down the Andes Mountains that sweeps across huge chunks of the Argentinian flatlands in Plangonia, swinging over across the Pacific. New Zealand is effectively subject to eternal wind, at least on the coasts and on the lower, more exposed areas like the peninsulas and the various necks of said peninsulas. The winds change patterns as different climatic and weather systems shift through the region. Their neighbor Australia does have eternal winds, not with exactly the same strength usually, and that occurs primarily along the coast of the Great Australian Bight, with the stronger portions, the more concentrated, being in the eastern portion of the Great Australian Bight. Indonesia has a permanent wind region in and around that gap between Sumatra and Java. The Philippines has quite a number of areas. The neck of Luzon, the main island there, is sort of a pass-through that wind is sort of open to break in the mountains that the wind gets to rush through. And then, as the wind is forced to get around and channel through the pathways that the mountainous islands allow it, you get this entire portion among the southern islands or the central southern islands as the wind is trying to make its way through and around. And just to the northwest of them, Taiwan, actually all around is a subject to eternal wind, and Taiwan is kind of like a rock in the river for that wind. South Africa also gets subjected to the rounding winds trying to cut around the southern tip of Africa. There are also a few specific pocket channels within South Africa interior that various interior wind patterns get kicked up in. Similarly, but on a larger scale, there is a interior wind there is a pattern of interior sweeping winds up in northern Africa, in Chad especially, and Niger, over in Kazakhstan. Down in the southeastern portion, right at the base of those mountains, there is usually eternal wind. And then over in and along the coastlines of the Caspian Sea, there is effectively eternal wind all around everybody's coast, as although the directions change and sometimes there's two circulations instead of one, the Caspian Sea is usually always seeing some form of large seabound air circulation around it. Up north, another region of eternal wind is roughly centered around the Yamalo region in Upper Russia, near, near and around those Arctic peninsulas where a lot of their oil and gas is. And over in China, along a lot of the Inner Mongolia area along that strip, as air coming down from the surrounding mountains and out of the Taklamakan Desert into the Gobi. Also over in Iran, there is a set of dual downflows where the air falls down from the mountains and, and follows the breaks in between the mountains, the different mountain sets, and flows its way north to south 
And last but not least, almost forgot, the northwest of Scotland over in the UK, particularly the northwestern portion and especially offshore because of the strong Atlantic weather patterns that constantly form mass circulations around the area. So wind turbines in these regions will generate a relatively constant amount of power, usually results in a power output from those wind turbines, not just consistent, but consistently a lot closer to the actual total capacity that you have installed, and is thus, you know, a lot more reliable of a source. But, anyways, that's it for this one, so thank you everybody for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. PayPal and Patreon are down there if you want to support me, only do so if you actually can. There's a link in the description to a Google Drive folder with all kinds of different graphs and charts and data compilations across all kinds of different energy, resource, mining, everything. There's a link to my photography Instagram below that, and a link in the top pinned comment to my cat's YouTube channel. May God bless and protect all of you, and I will see you all around next time.